Okay, so something for us to think about is um, what is persuasion? So what does persuasion mean to you? What do you think about when you hear persuasion? So a lot of people will use the word rhetoric kind of in place of the word persuasion. But is rhetoric always used to persuade? I don't know. What do you think? So today when we hear the word rhetoric, we might think of it in modern terms, particularly in relation to politics. You probably hear the word rhetoric all the time in politics if you pay attention to politics. In fact, as long as we've been able, human beings have been uh, have used speech to argue and persuade with varying degrees of success. So if we're going to take it back to the beginning, um, to the Greeks. So the Greeks were among the first to make a formal study of persuasive speech. After the establishment of democracy, decisions were no longer made by one powerful um, leader entity. Suddenly, in order to accomplish anything, you had to convince a whole bunch of people to vote for your idea. So what does that sound like? As a result, the ability to make speeches and persuade audiences became one of the most prized skills. And people who could teach public speaking were in high demand. So we're thinking back to Aristotle here. Um, again, and he's one of the most famous of these philosophers. Um, he wrote what many say is the most influential text on rhetoric, quite literally called On Rhetoric. And um, this text is still used in classes today. Um, in England in the 17th and 18th century, uh, dozens of textbooks on rhetoric were produced and it formed a standard part of a grammar school and university education. Um, persuasive writing and oratory soon crossed the Atlantic to spur on the American Revolution. Rhetoric formed a key part of the education of statesmen and leaders whose words are still remembered today. So we're thinking of people like Frederick Douglass or Abraham Lincoln, these really persuasive pieces of writing that they um, came up with. So now let's go to today. Today in the age of mass media, the ability to communicate your message and to interpret the messages of others is more important than ever. It really is. Um, everything is rhetoric. This doesn't just apply to journalism or politics, and it doesn't mean arguing all the time. And a lot of times when I use the word argue or arguing in this class, it doesn't directly mean that you're yelling at somebody and trying to uh, get your way, if you will. It's more so just trying to persuade, use rhetoric. In fact, whether at work, uh, in school, social media, or even around the kitchen table, we're constantly participating in civil discussion and finding ourselves in situations where it's important to articulate our thoughts. And that's what rhetoric can help us do. Um, hopefully this class is able to give you some framework and guidance into becoming a better communicator. simple definition um, if you ask for just a very basic definition of rhetoric a lot of times you're going to get uh, the art of persuasion is is probably the number one thing um, so we have the art of speaking or writing effectively um, we have a skill uh, or skill in the effective use of speech and then just verbal communication so some synonyms could be uh, oratory, nonsense, or gas. If you're familiar with rhetoric, you're familiar with the rhetorical devices. Um, in high school rhetoric classes, I feel like this is something that is extremely highlighted is the rhetorical devices. So we're thinking of um, kind of how to persuade an audience. We're thinking of how we can um, come up with a piece of writing or a piece of material that, um, I mean, doesn't necessarily convince, but you kind of want to convince your audience that you know what you're talking about. And this can be in anything. So we have pathos, logos, and ethos. Um, a lot of times you'll hear me refer to it as ethos, pathos, logos. Um, but 
for the sake of this image here, we have where I, I have um, pathos and heart as something that you know goes together. So we have heart, head, and cred. So pathos. Whenever you hear us talk about pathos, you're thinking of uh, it, you want to think of empathy, values, emotion. What's the emotional appeal? So a lot of times you'll see me writing some uh, feedback on your papers, and maybe I'll say. Um, I need some more emotional appeal to this. So that means I'm talking about pathos. How are you going to really capture your audience with something that is like relatable or something that's going to really make them feel something? Um, emotion is huge. And whether you're using it, using it to persuade, whether you're using it to um, kind of discuss your own story or whether you're using it to manipulate somebody, the, the use of emotion is very impactful. So now we have logos, so think of the head. So we're thinking logic, logos, logic, logos, logic. So this is your proof, this is your stats. Um, this is even the way a speaker formats their speech. So sometimes uh, whenever it comes to, um, whenever you hear somebody who is speaking about something, so whether this is like a you know, political figure, a lot of times you're going to hear in their speeches, they're going to start off with a story. And it's a story that's going to really capture their audience. And so they're using pathos, but then they're going to move on to some logical things. This is proof. This is why. Uh, and this is how. And these are the numbers. And so it's just kind of appealing to those who prefer um, kind of a num numerical proof. I'm about to sneeze. Oh gosh, okay. Um, and then we have ethos. So this is credibility. So what makes this speaker credible? I think about this right now. What makes me credible as somebody who can teach you this English 1030 class? Of course, on the first day I got up there and I told you my credentials. So then you were like, oh, well, of course she can teach this. But let's think about this in terms of anyone else. So let's think about this in terms of, again, somebody who is um, trying to convince you that they are a profession professional in their field so um what gives them credibility and basically how do you, how can you trust this person why why are you trusting this person how are you trusting this person what experience do they have you know a lot of times you're going to see in like a job application you know perf we prefer five years of experience in this they want to know that you're credible they want to know that you have a good reputation that they can trust you Apologies for sniffling here. So at this point in the class, um, I would have you all kind of get on this uh, get on this PowerPoint and write down three speakers that you admire. So what I want you to do now is I want you to go back to the PowerPoint that you should have the link to, and I want you to find this slide and I want you to go ahead and type in three speakers that you admire. So. Whenever you go here, it's gonna look like this. Feel free to just type any random name. I mean, obviously it's gonna be someone who you admire as a speaker. But um, as you do this, you can just press enter. Um, feel free to even edit this in any, in any way. Feel free to put more text box uh, over text boxes over here um, just kind of fill up the whole space I don't want it to become this whole this like using this one text box and it like ends up going off this off the screen so um, go ahead take some time I'm not sure what I had prior to this but take some time I want you to pause the video take a moment and write down three speakers that you admire Okay, so ideally you would want to talk about why you admire these speakers. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to open up a discussion board for this and I am going to let you all talk about your favorite speakers and why. And whenever you're doing this, I want you to go back to these rhetorical devices and I want you to kind of think about the way in which these speakers that you chose use these rhetorical devices. So in the discussion board you're going to write why you chose the three speakers you're going to find a quote that stands out to you and it says finally be ready to talk about it with the class 
what you're going to do is you're just going to respond to two of your classmates in detail and talk about something that's maybe relatable, something that stood out to you as well. All right, so that's the lecture. It's super quick, super simple, hopefully. Um, and you let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this video and I think we're going to look at project one more in depth on Monday. Um, so I have on the schedule that you should have, let me, let me actually find the schedule so that I'm not just saying something random to all of you. This is all in real time. I don't edit these videos. Um, this is all just happening at once. Okay, I see what I have here. Okay, so I'm gonna share my uh, the schedule really quick. So let me stop sharing that. And let me share the schedule with all of you and we're gonna talk, talk through this a little bit. Okay, so can you see that? Yes. Okay, back to our schedule. So we are here today. This is what we're doing. So ideally, you want to have steps three and four of project one completed. So what does that mean? So on Friday, you should have worked on steps one and two. These are not anything you need to turn in. This is just kind of a way to keep you accountable and map out where you should be within this project. So we have step one and two of project one, and I'm going to go to project one. Let me see if I can pull this up really quick as well. Let me stop sharing again and then go here. Project one. Okay. I said I was going to stop the video to kind of go more in depth on this, but I lied. I'm sorry. Um, so when we go down to project one, you have steps one, two, three, and four. By that time, you should have those completed. On, let me see, on Monday, we are going to go in depth about Adobe Express because that is what you are going to be using when it comes to this um, project. So let me go back to the schedule so that I can keep up with when we're doing what. Okay, stop sharing that again. And then let me go back to the schedule. Okay, so we have today, we're not gonna be exploring Adobe Express, this is being moved. And it will be reflected in the schedule once I am done recording these lectures. So we're gonna be moving, exploring Adobe Express to here. And then I'm gonna move the first draft to here, just so you have a little more time. Remember that the final draft of your personal narratives are gonna be due on February 2nd. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Ideally, you will wanna follow this schedule though so these asynchronous days on Fridays are not just days for you to just like chill and hang out. Um, although like I highly recommend doing that and you know getting some self-care in is so important. But this is time to spend working on these projects um, because as time goes on they get a little more extensive. So I want you to kind of have this like accountability time. Um, so as far as personal narrative project goes, I want you to spend Friday really working on steps three and four. Um, also keep in mind that we do have, you do have a response due on that day. Um, I couldn't fit the danger of a single story anywhere else, but I really, really, really love this video and I wanna hear from you about it. So that's why I put it on um, this coming Friday. If you haven't already, please make sure that you have logged in and explored the Adobe Creative Cloud. And whatever questions you have about Adobe, the Adobe Suite, Adobe Express, um, bring them to bring them with you on Monday, 
and we're going to dedicate some time to that. Okay, I think that's all I have. Let me check here. I'm going to put this screen back up. Screen. What does that look like? Oh, we've got, all right. Well, I'm going to stop sharing the, this one. So next time, uh, so for Friday, you're going to watch The Danger of a Single Story and you're going to do a response that is going to be on Canvas. This is something you're turning in. Um, and then Monday, you have a reading and you're going to be doing a summary of the reading and discussion question as well. And then from there, we're going to be talking about Adobe Express, Project One, kind of getting caught up on all of that. And then hopefully we will be where we need to be. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, reach out. Don't be afraid to. Again, I apologize for moving class online in a very quick way. Um, you got to kind of adapt to situations and that's what this class is all about. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening and I will talk to you soon.